Well, it's often been asked, uh, what's better to uh, to deal with health care costs, a, a private plan or a public uh, public option? And and I think it's really a question of who do you think does a better job of setting the premiums in a business uh, situation? Do you think politicians or business people? Um, you know, there, there have been a lot of concerns voiced about you know private insurers and the fact that they want to underwrite uh, uh, individuals in the private insurance market and 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 so forth. But this is part of a, a an, an operating insurance system where they're concerned about the risks they face and they want to price those risks accordingly. Uh, and whereas if you have these decisions made for political reasons, then you know there's, there's no no there's no reason to believe that uh, that that a that that a, a premium set for political reasons is going to control costs better than one that's made for sound business reasons. And again, you know, I, I point you to the private insurance companies that are forced to reserve against their losses and charge premiums that reflect their expected losses. And compare that to Medicare, where, as we mentioned uh, in an earlier part of our conversation here today, they have a $37 trillion unfunded liability. Now, who do you think has done a better job of controlling health care costs? You know, the private insurer that by law has to charge a premium that reflects the underlying cost of doing business, or the case of Medicare, where uh, they've, they've, they've uh, been able to charge a lot less and their, their costs have spiraled out of control. I mean, you know, that's certainly a, a pretty sobering, sobering comparison. Well, I, I think that the, I think the entire health care debate has, has degenerated. And, and it's unfortunate because I think there's a lot that can be done to improve uh, health care and in particular the mechanism by which we deliver health care in the United States. I think there are a lot of uh, insurance um, reforms around the margins that could be very useful in helping us control health care costs about you know, things like incentivizing uh, individuals to, 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 to understand the cost of what they consume. Um, you know, I think if we're concerned about people you know, not wanting to get health care because they have to pay the price, well, I think there are things we can carve out. Of, 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 of the deductibles that would take care of that problem. But this is not the debate we're having. The debate we're having, it's like it's existing in a, in, a, in a parallel universe somewhere, where we're having a debate over a public option and we're having a debate over increased mandates and we're, 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 we're having a, a, a debate over, over eliminating incentives. And, and I find it all to be, to be almost surreal as an economist. And I, and, and, and we hear numbers bandied about, which, while true, don't really mean what people think they mean. So, for example, we hear this number about we have 47 million uninsured in the United States. You know, well, we got 300 million people and we got 47 million uninsured. That sounds bad. But when you drill into those numbers, what you find out is of the 47 million, 10 million of them are uh, illegal immigrants who are unlikely to be covered anyway. So now we're down to 37 million. 18 million of them have incomes above $50,000 a year, which puts them in the top half of the income distribution in the United States. And if we subtract those people out, we have 19 million of the 40 million left, but those include people who are eligible for Medicare and haven't enrolled because they haven't been sick, so as soon as they get sick, they'll enroll as well as a lot of people who were offered uh, health care by their employers and cho chose not to take it. So the actual number of uninsured is lo a lot less than 47 million. And yet that number gets bandied about in, in an almost Armageddon-like uh, 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 way. And so, you know, I, what I find unfortunate about the debate is, is you know, there's sort of been a, an exodus away from an honest and truthful debate and a, 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 a stampede towards an effort to do something, anything, as long as something is done. And, and I am not confident that what's done is going to improve matters a whole lot. And it may, in fact, make matters worse unless we are very, very careful. I mean, in terms of where, where could we go from here, 
you know, I I wish folks would in, in, in the political and the policy arena would take a deep breath and and ask themselves the following question. You know, what is it we're trying to accomplish here? Are we trying to accomplish uh, access to health care for people who would like to have health care and can't afford it? Is that what we're worried about? Well, then we're probably looking at 15, maybe 20 million people tops. And, and, and when we thought we had a problem with hungry, hung, hunger in this country, we didn't go out and nationalize the grocery stores. We didn't have the government run grocery stores with a public option. What we, what we decided is that we were going to give people income supplements, called them food stamps, that would provide them access to food. And if we really think what we have here is a problem of access to health care, then what we need to do is deal with the access problem. And, uh, you know, raise my taxes and everybody else's by enough so that, you know, these 19 million or 15 million or whatever the number happened to be can get access to health care. Um, if we're concerned that, you know, that the problem here is that Medicare has this massive unfunded liability because they don't charge enough for, for, uh, for, for the services that they promised, well, that's a different issue. And again, I think that's the elephant in the room. You know, I think we, we have a, a debate about access to health care, but what's really got the policymakers scared out of their minds is this massive and expanding unfunded Medicare liability that they haven't been able to get under control. I mean, we've had a lot of discussion about Social Security and Social Security going bankrupt and what that's going to mean, but that's nothing, nothing compared to the Medicare problem that we see. And, uh, you know, if that's the issue, then we need to think carefully about the promises we've made and the way in which we're going to finance those promises down the road.